All right, welcome back. Time for your business news now. Mike Eppel in the wings. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm doing all right. Okay, it's the morning of the S's. We are hoping for stock stability. <laughs> Let's hope. My goodness. Yes. Yes. Yesterday, yesterday was a Monday mess. There. Uh, oh, and, and, I see alliteration. And, and, I like. And, and uh, a lot of alliteration from powerful people placed in or powerful anchors. Never mind. Anxious anchors placed in powerful <laughs> posts. I just, I just blew the line from broadcast news. Come Mike on. Apple. Okay. It's right. it's early. It's early. Give me a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, yesterday was a mess, uh, and, and there's no other way to really uh, uh, summarize it other than the fact that the TSX was down 600 points plus and closed below 20,000 for the first time in months. The uh, U.S. Uh, tech sector benchmarked the NASDAQ's down to its lowest level in over a year's time. It has been a route for stocks in several days now. It's all about interest rates, inflation, the price for gas, the global supply chain, the war in Ukraine, earnings. It just runs the gamut of uh, issues that the market has been dealing with. And, uh, yeah, last year you wouldn't see a day where you'd start lower and not think that the market would be up by the close of trade. This year it's been the complete opposite, and it seems to accelerate. The selling accelerates as we get closer uh, to uh, the close of trade every day, which just shows that investors don't have a lot of confidence right now, and they're kind of taking what they could get. And, and this is, again, a market overreaction. You see this. It's psychological. You know, people want to buy when the prices are the highest they've ever been, but they never want to, or well, they always want to sell as prices drop. It, it's, again, the, the market uh, mentality, vagaries, whatever you want to call it, always interesting. Uh, there are a few, though, that are starting to say, hey, it's time to buy the dip again because, uh, look, some of these stocks are 50, 60, 70 percent off. They're on sale. <laughs> You like, yeah, if you'd like to like, see it that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like a, a, a discount sticker when you go shopping, but not so much for the markets. Not so much. Uh, Mike, let's look at the uh, price for oil and then in yeah. turn what that could do for the price for gas. Well, we're up about almost $2 per liter here, or ostensibly at $1.99.9. Uh, and uh, I am watching the price for oil retreat. It was down about $6 yesterday, down another couple of dollars this morning. So this might lead to a respite for this uh, uptrend in the gas price. Uh, trends, but uh, whether it lasts or not, I mean, look, these things change on a dime. Uh, you know, natural gas was exceptionally expensive this time yesterday morning, and then it dropped something like 15% uh, yesterday. So I, it's just, it's moving too quick to say, but I think, best guess, prices will be cheaper a little bit midweek as we go uh forward here a little for, bit uh, some pump, pump price pressure we'll take anything we can get right now mike that's right um suncor meantime massive yep. quarterly profits 2.9 billion and a pro and a dividend that's going up 12 percent not a surprise we've heard from the energy companies because last year they were making no money uh because the price for oil was so cheap and now of course it's very expensive and all of them are uh, moving to the upside with their earnings so uh, yeah we grumble about it but uh, kind of is what it is, unfortunately. Suncor has been at, look, if you got stock in it, it's been actually a pretty good performer. And that's one that has weathered the storm of the market volatility. As we talk about a money maker, Tesla, but uh, a bit of a halt here. They're looking at their Shanghai plant, of course, looking at COVID, COVID protocol and what that is doing. Yeah, less than 200 cars a day are coming out of the Shanghai facility for Tesla right now because, uh, look, that city is still in lockdown. It's been weeks. And, and, and... <laughs> This is, this is a, a signal for the global economy. China's slowing down, and that is going to have a ripple effect. Maybe not quite yet, but Tesla's feeling it and other major players. Uh, Sony's saying they can't build enough PlayStations because of the, of the supply chain issues. Same thing for Nintendo. Anything tech-related, uh, getting a product out of China is a big problem right now. Finally for you, that iconic Andy Warhol, Marilyn Monroe portrait. How mm -hmm. much would you pay for it? Well, look, I would actually pay for this if I had the money. It sold for 100 and $95 million at, a, at the Christie's auction, uh, most ever for, a, uh, I think, a 20th century artist, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I like this because it's something you can actually hang on your wall. For it's sure. a tangible. It's it's not a non fungible token. It's a <laughs> tangible item. <laughs> you can touch it, but you don't want to you, you don't want to get the, the grease on your fingers because that would ruin it. Oh, and then no. yeah, you just look no, at it. Of course it. not. You but look at it. it. It's it's amazing. And and uh, you know this is this is again a sign. Melanie, you know, art is an asset class. Let's face it. Um, you know, people buy art because they think it's going to go up in price. And this one certainly has. And uh, likely more, you know, going to get more yeah. expensive over the course of time. Just don't tell me Kim Kardashian bought it because then that would cause an uproar. Uh, First the dress, the, uh, then I don't know if the that. buyer's been re revealed yet. <laughs> uh, don't, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't Mike Apple, that we know. All right, Mike, have Not yourself so a wonderful day. Talk to you on Wednesday. Thank you.